Hi, my name is Christina and here on this channel we talk about multiple sclerosis and not only. And here is supposed to be an intro but I don't have one so let's get straight to the story. And today I'd like to tell you about my encounter with a devotee. Well, I hope I said it correctly. I'm not sure. I never checked the pronunciation. Well, back then I didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know this word. I didn't, I didn't know anything of it, you know. I never thought about it. I think it happened uh, maybe 10 years ago, something about that year of time, like really many years ago. I had been diagnosed maybe one or two years prior to that. And uh, as for me, like this diagnosis at first kind of pushed my self-confidence a lot. It was like, wow, now the first thing people are going to know about me is multiple sclerosis and they are not going to like me, which is complete BS, like it's not true, it doesn't matter what you have, people either love you or don't love you, that's it, <laughs> regardless of what health conditions you have, well, but I, like it all comes with experience, you know, but back then, zero experience, just being scared, being freaked out, um, like, oh wow, how am I going to find a partner, like, no, I was really like worried about dating. I was worried a lot about a lot of things, but dating was obviously one of them because I am a young woman. I was even younger back then. And um, I googled a little bit and I found a website, a dating website for people with disabilities. There are a lot of them. I don't remember the name. Like, uh, I just signed up for one of them. I'm like, yeah, let's see what's going to happen. I to be honest, I don't know what I was expecting to find. I don't know if I was expecting to find the person who would be okay with my disability, with me having a mess, or maybe I expected to find uh, somebody who also has some kind of disability, which I, I didn't know. Like, I really didn't think anything. Just like, I was like, okay. It's, uh, that's how my brain works. I have a problem. Here's the first solution I see in front of me. I go for the solution. That's how I work. That's how I function. And I didn't get into analysis, like nothing. Okay, so now for a disability dating website. And that's what I did. And um, I think quite uh, soon after my um, registration there, like a uh, man from Scandinavia, uh, it doesn't matter what country, Oh, I can say it was Norway because he's unlikely to be watching this video. So the guy from Norway uh, sent me a message. I was like, hey, my name is this and that. Like giving him a name, let's call him Luke. I don't know if it's in the name or what, but it's a tradition in story time videos to give people names, not real names. So let's call him Luke. So Luke. Uh, told me, hey, my name is Luke and I'm from Norway, but I moved to Sweden and I have no friends here, so I'm just looking for friends who are like, okay, but I'm not in Sweden, so like it doesn't matter, we can become pimple friends, we can just chat and send each other emails, so like, yeah, okay, no problem. Uh, he seemed to be quite a nice guy, we, we mind you, it was like, mind you, it was like 10 years ago or something, and texting wasn't a big thing, like WhatsApp. I think mobile internet wasn't a big thing back then. I think it was quite expensive. So we literally sent each other emails, like long emails, like imagine A4 letters. Uh, so we, uh, it lasted for a few months. He seemed to be nice, smart, interesting, funny, but not much. I was quite into my own problems, like thinking about work, thinking about, I don't remember, I think I read this in university, so something like that, and I was mostly thinking about myself, about my problems, so I was like, I was corresponding, I can't, like, how can you like somebody if you have never talked to this person, right, and we did not talk, like, we just exchanged emails, and it was going back and forth, I think, I'm not sure, we added each other on Facebook, extensions but no phone calls nothing i literally didn't know the sound of his voice not to mention no video calls just imagine nothing fewer emails like in all times when people send each other letters uh you have some idea of what a person looks like from photos and that's about it that is it 
like minimum of information now you can google a lot of things about the person you can use image search like names companies back then no it seems wild but well the world was different back then and i remember i my birthday was coming and i had a pretty bad relapse like pretty bad relapse and i felt so bad i was like I have to do something for my birthday and I just texted him okay look let's meet for my birthday somewhere and because we were from different countries uh, we chose a country which was visa free for both of us it was Ukraine <laughs> and uh, so we picked Kiev as our destination and um, because he didn't need a visa I didn't need a visa to go to Ukraine so and then I had my relapse I was like Okay, I used steroids, like infusions, I think I did a course of 3 or 5 infusions of steroids to get rid of my relapse, to treat my relapse as quickly as possible. And literally the next day after hospital I caught the train and I came to Kyiv, I came to Kyiv a day before him. Um, I spent, oh it's like nothing, might I just walked around Kyiv back then, I could walk for a long time. I don't even remember, mostly the hotel was in the city center uh, because Ukraine wasn't that expensive back then, I didn't know about now and for me, because Russian economy was also much better than now so being in Ukraine was not expensive at all I think now, <laughs> because it doesn't matter and so I walked around the city center and um, so the location was pretty good and the next day he was supposed to come and uh, so I woke up all excited the next day, I think it was the day before my birthday, uh, I I don't know why I didn't take a taxi, I took a bus to the airport, then at the airport there was a whole little adventure because I came to the wrong terminal, I couldn't find him, so when I finally found out his terminal and mind you no phone calls because 10 years ago you could not just call somebody on whatsapp or viber it was impossible so we literally sent each other sms messages no joke sms and i came to this terminal i don't see him there then i came to this information box i was like can you just announce that christina is looking for luke and there was like a loud announcement through the airport christina is looking for luke please come to this information box or something information desk right and then how we met i was like he's a bit shorter than me but it was okay like i didn't have any expectations i just like it was a little adventure for me and uh, so we kind of we met then we took a taxi we came back to the hotel he was pretty freaked out he was afraid of everything in ukraine i don't know why i was like crazy he got even a bit scared of our taxi driver but the taxi driver kind of took a round route around not going directly to the hotel doctor with traffic jams and he got all freaked out because of it i was like okay uh then we came to the hotel we chatted next evening we got like no the same evening we got so wasted we went to the bar and we were just drinking 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 like we drank so much then we came back to the hotel nothing happened my like i see this person for the first time and the next day we kind of yeah we stayed in the same hotel room but again it doesn't mean anything because something was off next day we kind of went for a walk he invited me to a really cool restaurant for my birthday it was on top of some building with the great view of Kiev, and um, but something was off, like I could feel it, off from both sides, but I could never kind of figure out why. But it's not like we were kind of friendly, chatted about lots of things, discussed things, like, but just like friends who are not really good friends, you know, who, a friend who we don't know very well. And then we, nothing major that I can remember happened. Like we had this dinner, child, that everything was very polite and the next day he had to get a flight back to Norway and I was coming back uh, to Russia a day after that so I spent a whole other day in Kyiv I met some girls there, they gave me excursion Kyiv is an extremely beautiful city, this is amazing Kyiv, Kyiv is absolutely amazing but kind of he came back to Norway, came back to Russia we for quite a while, we didn't kind of keep in touch or anything, you know, just 
random messages now and then and um, but he just asked me from time to time hey Christina how are you and I think two or three months after our meeting I I had a relapse again. It was me. I had relapsed pretty often and I kind of, yeah, I had a relapse. And he then got so interested in it. He was like, oh, how are you feeling? Oh, how are you treating it? Can you walk? And he got all interested, like 10 messages a day. I was like, why are you so interested? It's just like relapse. I feel so bad. Like, But he got really excited about it. He kept texting me and I remember calling my friend and telling her, I was like, okay, you know what, I think this guy, he likes the fact that I'm not feeling well. She's like, why? But I was like, oh, like he's all over me now, he's texting me and he kind of asks me all the time how I'm feeling and everything. It's like, that sounds crazy. And the very same day he sends me a message like Christina there is something I have to tell you I was like this is it and so he's like you know I'm kind of really interested in people who have certain disabilities and then he sent me links and he's like I never told anybody about it my family and friends don't know about it you're the only person I can share it with and I was like yeah I was right well, it seemed absolutely crazy that I could get such a thing without even knowing that it, like, it was a thing. Like, that there are people who kind of get excited and who are attracted to people with disabilities and... And then, I, of course, I read into it and, uh, well, it is what it is. Like, it exists, okay? It's, it's just one part of our life. There are a lot of things which exist in our world. And... Uh, then it was pretty, I don't know how to describe, weird, bizarre. Uh, he was uh, telling me things like, oh, maybe you should not get any treatment because if you don't feel well, you can come and live with me and I will take care of you and to share some of his sex offenses with me, like taking care of a person who can't do anything and just preferably not having any links. And I was like, that's the talk I don't like because, um, having multiple sclerosis you obviously want to be healthy you don't want to get uh, worse and uh, it was so this is kind of a stranger to me moreover uh, but he tried his luck offering me this very seductive thing but, but of course not so we lost touch because I mean, there was nothing, like, we didn't like each other, obviously. I mean, he could like me if I didn't feel well, but I didn't like him. Uh, it was an interesting meeting, though. And I remember, like, he's, like, pretty weird. I remember he he knew that, I, like, after this, when he asked me how I am, just probably to check, maybe I feel worse. And uh, he knew that I spent a lot of time in England. Uh, he was like, you know what, I know this girl on Facebook and she's like, she's proper disabled, like, she can't do anything, can you please, when you're in England, come to her and tell her about me. I was like, what? Like, tell this girl yourself about you, you know, that's kind of sending her message, don't uh, stalk her, like, without, like, as I understood, he hadn't talked to her just found her, following her, and wanted me to it was so random again. And uh, I think it was our last interaction many years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, something like that. I don't know anything about him now. I um, never got deeper into it. I remember just one funny thing when I was reading a forum of uh, devotees and they complained that if you fall in love uh, with somebody who has multiple sclerosis, it's the worst because you can love this person, but seeing this person deteriorate can be excruciating. I was like, oh, really? I thought you're gonna like it, but I'm not going to, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody here. Again, we all have our preferences and 
and we all are attracted to something. We have types and certain things attract us. Well, then somebody can be attracted to people with disabilities, right? It happens. So, um, after this, uh, I got settled with my personal life, so it's just like I never had to think about I can make other story about it. Uh, but yes, yeah, that's how I met a devotee once without even knowing. Ah, and about Kiev, the reason why he was off all this time. Because I was too healthy for him. Because of course I was trying to show my best, to walk my best, you know, not to show that I have any health issues because we always try to make a good impression. Ha! How ironic. I was trying to be healthy for him and he didn't like it, well, things happen. So, uh, what do you think if you're a devotee yourself? Tell me uh, what do you think about dating a person with a mess and um, uh, if somebody with a disability watching this. Tell me about your own experience, so I'll be happy to hear it. And uh, see you in my next video, okay? Mwah! See you soon. Bye bye. Oh, don't forget to, to click bell button not to miss my videos. Subscribe, like my videos, share my videos. I have other stories which I may or may not tell. Who knows? We'll see about that. And see you soon. Bye.